talking about the big GOP debate last night uh, up in Simi Valley. I know it was late for the East Coast. Sorry, sometimes yeah. it works that way. Yeah, you know what? We Bernie always Sanders get... tweeting, it's late. Can this thing please end? You know what? We always get the short end of the stick when the East Coast feeds happen, right. so they can get it a little bit too. But let's talk uh, to our political analyst, John Dadian, is here to break down morning, John. all of the stuff from last night. Good morning. Good morning. You predicted Carly Fiorina would right do after well. This, can I go for a walk on the yeah, yes. go for your, Yeah, you yes. get to go. Yeah, so tell us about your. Now, but when you came here last week, you said Car you looked for Carly Fiorina to really do well in this debate, and she did. We're By still, all accounts. We're still in the baseball season, so I'm going to use a lot of those analogies. <laughs> I think everyone did well. So basically, some of the main names, Rubio, Kasich, Chrissy, they hit good solid singles, if not doubles. Carly started whacking that out of the ballpark mm -hmm. every time she opened her mouth. Clearly, she I, I mean, at least from my assessment of her throughout the night, every time she spoke, she might not have taken up all of the time, but the, in the time that she was allotted, she g gave specifics. She had a clear plan. And I don't think anyone else really other than Governor Christie had specifics. I think that's absolutely accurate. At least that's right on the money. And here's another interesting point. Uh, I'm going to state the obvious. Because she's the only woman, you notice that nobody really was really wanting to interrupt her where they didn't have that problem with their male counterparts. Right. They were interrupting each other left and right. So I just thought that was an interesting mm -hmm. little dynamic going on. I was really surprised that the Republicans allowed the kind of line of questioning that, that Jake Tapper took, which was, he said, she said, she said, he said, he said, he said, what do you think about what he said? Instead of getting specifics, what was that all about? I, I have no, I have a slightest yeah. idea. Uh, same reaction as you. I thought it was strange. I think that what they were trying to do is CNN, I think, was under a little pressure since the first debate went so well in the sense of viewer uh, watching. Viewership, um, right. Uh, that they felt that they had to do little twists, et cetera. It certainly got distracting. And I'll be honest with you. I understand a couple of these light questions they did were meant to be light, et cetera. I thought it was silly. Yeah. If I was one of the candidates, I would have said, can I take my time to talk about health care or something yeah. like that? And that yeah. would have been a, right. a right. solid slam right there. Let's talk about Ben Carson. You know, he going into this debate uh, last night, came, you know, riding a really high number two, uh, 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 just under Donald Trump. But he just got lost. What happened with him? Well, he, he uh, again, poor grammar, but he kind of got lost. I think all of the candidates did the cardinal rule of debate, and they did no harm. I don't think anybody embarrassed themselves. So Carson, I, I kind of agree with what you said. He was kind of flat. Mm -hmm. He certainly didn't jump up like a lot of people had hoped. But again, Carly really stole, stole, the, stole the, show. the show. It really is simple as, as that. The issues were really, I, I think that, Overall, I think there were, there were lots of issues tossed around, but nothing seemed to stick. There wasn't any one thing that really stuck until Carly Fiorina brought up the whole issue of, of Planned Parenthood and how important that was to her. And also the, the marijuana thing also surprised me as well. I had not heard about the death of her son. Uh, I had heard, but uh, yes, I, uh, that was great that she brought that up and the way she brought up. She didn't bring it up too melodramatic, but she brought it up very straightforward. On the Planned Parenthood, here's the interesting thing that I'm observing uh, based on some tweets before and during the, the debate and after the debate is both parties think think they can use that issue in the general election, which mm -hmm. is ironic. Mm -hmm. The Democrats think it's going to backfire and the Republicans. Republicans think it's going to resonate as per Carly's tweet. Here's an interesting twist that I've Observed last night. So everybody agrees Carly's done well in two baits in a row. So people are saying some, some things such as, wouldn't it be nice to have Carly, a woman, against a woman Hillary? Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's certainly possible. Here's something that I thought of. You know what nobody's talking about yet? What if you have a Republican woman nominee, Carly, against a male Democrat. Democrat. That would be interesting. I still think, as I've said on this air, I still think there's a very strong chance Hillary could implode and then you'll have several main Democrats jumping in. That would be interesting for sure. Let's talk about the strategies of Donald Trump versus Jeb Bush. We saw kind of Jeb Bush emerging and coming out on the offensive last night. And Donald Trump not being vintage Trump, not being as a I felt that he was backing off the attacks that we normally see from Trump and Jeb stepping up. I agree with you on the Jeb. I disagree with you on the, the Donald completely. And again, actually, you asked a great question and you, you used the word strategy. I think the Bush campaign has a strategy, basically the Energizer, and he had a great one-liner about that. Mm -hmm. So that was a form strategy. I don't think Trump has a strategy. I think the Trump strategy in general is let Trump be Trump. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what he's doing. The reason I disagree with you, the first words out of his mouth was a zing against Rand. 
Rand Paul, and then yeah. he comments about a personal comment. I think he was vintage Trump. So, in your opinion, who is going to drop out now? Who uh, Scott Walker did not show well. There was a couple of uh, moments there where I thought Rand Paul stumbled a bit. Do you think either one of them will be in the next one? Again, great question, Carlos, and here's what's really going on. For the Republicans, in about four weeks, we have a Democratic debate, the, right. the first one. In about six weeks, it's the next Republican one. So, to answer your question directly, who's going to jump out? It's going to be based on the money. And ah. you're going to see when those start dropping out. Like Rick uh, so, Perry's money run out. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. First, he closed South Carolina, which was a huge indicator. And then the money was literally yeah. out of the bank account. So I see before the next debate in about six weeks, which I believe is in Colorado, I think you'll have four to five people drop out. That quite many. Honestly. That, I was wow. going to say, that many. It, it, it just, again, because of last night, you are starting to see the separation of the, the, the real top tier mm -hmm. uh, of four to five people. I think, I mean, I would say that Christie uh, stays in. Kasich stays in, clearly Carly, uh, Carson, and Trump. I would say those are your top five right now, possibly Rubio. Possibly Rubio. Very interesting. Yeah. Watch right. the money as always. Well, Show yeah, me the money. Yeah, yeah, follow the money. But here, here's the thing about Jeb Bush, and I think Jeb Bush did, did well, and I thought his answers about his brother were really v right on point, very well rehearsed, and, and very well done. But, and it was funny that they call it the, the elephant in the room, no one wanted to talk about the Bush last name, but he, I think he, he held his ground very well last night against all kinds of charges uh, about the war and the way his brother handled that. Did absolutely, and again, mm -hmm. getting back to your point yeah. about uh, Trump, clearly Trump made some missteps by trying to be Trump and trying to be glib. The, the most classic was saying, uh, I don't feel safer anymore, and right. that's when a classic Jeb Bush came back and says, you know, my brother kept us safe for years, mm -hmm. and maybe we're not safe over the last Huge four years. Huge applause from that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. See, again, my baseball analogy, that was probably uh, not a grand slam, but a home run. Yeah, I will say, though, one of the moments that on social media kind of started to blow up was when Jeb Bush said to to Trump, you need to apologize to my wife. And Donald <laughs> Trump just looked at him and said, no. I didn't say anything wrong. And said, then yeah. Jeb just said, OK, well, moving on. So <laughs> what, what, wasn't does that, going anywhere. what does that do for, for Jeb? Does that make him appear a little bit weak? You're so polite. I was going to use the word wimpy. Yeah, uh, I, don't you think? And, and again, You're going to insult my wife? Th this is terrible to compare people, but the reason I use the word wimpy, if you remember uh, the, one of the criticism against George Bush 41, his father literally, it's in the history books, the wimp factor. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. he's got to be very careful on that. You know what, uh, what I would have recommended? You know, it's great to Monday morning quarterback. <laughs> of course. But he should look straight in the camera because he had already mentioned that his wife was in the audience and said, sweetheart, I'm sorry, but that shows you, Mr. Mr. Trump. Who he is. The that, right. that would have been similar yeah. to a Carly statement saying the, the best line out of the entire night, we've talked about several great ones, the best line was when Carly kept it to two sentences about Trump's comment about her, her face. face. The woman heard oh. you, boom. And the, if you notice, the moderator was waiting for her to say something more, and she just waited until they moved she on. She stopped, yeah. Absolutely. Didn't perfect. It, that was perfect. perfectly That's one of her assets, measured. it's timing. Yeah. Trump is bad timing. Trump always wants to interrupt. And it sometimes looks like he's trying to be a bully. She has the best timing, I think, of all those. The other Thank misstep you. that Trump made was trying to out-doctor a doctor. I mean, how, how in the world? He's standing next to Dr. Carson talking about children, and this is a, the man's specialty is pediatrics. And, and, and it, Carson handled it beautifully, but I think Donald Trump really did not look credible in that area Agreed. at all. Agreed. Although, obviously, uh, for you folks, I look at things to analyze it. But just as a viewer, I'm thinking, my first thought was, he's talking about dosage? Yeah. He's, he's talking about dosage <laughs> of medicine. I'm like, what the heck was that? If Carson talked about it, I would think that would still be boring, sure. but at least he'd have credibility. And, uh, that, that really surprised me also. All right. John, great to see you. Thank yep. you for coming in this both. morning. Good discussion. Debate, no matter what. All right. We'll be